I see many young people in the audience today and looking at you all takes me back many decades to when I was a student at the University of Warsaw and studied biology. I was not a confident student. I was even worried that I'm not smart enough to write and defend my master thesis or magisterium. Little did I know that eventually I will get a doctorate, uh, do postdoctoral studies in uh, states, and start my own lab, and finally be invited to give a TEDx talk in Warsaw. So today, I'm going to take you on a journey that led to discovery of biological clocks. What is biological clock? It is a mechanism, internal mechanism, that, that generates daily rhythms. If you, these rhythms are not simply a response to day or night, but they continue in constant darkness. This experiment animal was kept first in uh, day-night conditions, and it had rhythms of activity shown by black bars with exactly 24 hours. But when it was uh, placed in constant darkness, the rhythms continued, but now they had a circa 24-hour period. And this is why we call this rhythm circadian rhythms. You may hear this um, sometimes around in the newspapers. So, uh, and you have internal timers as well, and you can feel its power if you take transcontinental journey. Flying from states to Poland, you miss part of the night. And although at your destination there is a bright, nice day, you feel extremely lousy. This is because your internal clock was preparing you to sleep, lowered your cognitive abilities, and except you miss the sleep and the night. But not to worry, in a few days your clock will sink to the solar day at the local destination. When I was a student in Warsaw doing my PhD, I actually uh, found uh, very interesting, made very interesting observations. I kept my insect in alternating uh, period of 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. But at one time, I noticed that my insects didn't produce any offspring. It seemed like they were sterile. This was very frustrating. But finally, I figured that the timer that was supposed to turn lights off failed, and the insects were in constant light. And when the timer was fixed, then they regained fertility. This serendipitous discovery that constant light sterilized insects was a beginning of my scientific career. It awakened curiosity in me. Why is that? And put me on the track to become a clock scientist. At the time when I was a student in Warsaw, the mechanism of the clock was completely not understood. And the first glimpses were obtained from a little fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, whose portrait you see on the screen. These flies have been used for over 100 years now for genetic discoveries because their genome is very well understood and there is many tools to manipulate gene expression. So what scientists did was observe that flies have very strong rhythm of emergence from a pupil case to adult. They do it in the morning, and even if lights are turned off, the rhythm continues. So researchers mutated hundreds of flies, hoping to find an individual that would emerge in the wrong time. And indeed, they found a fly who's a mutant whose progeny completely lost emergence rhythm. And in fact, it also lost a rhythm of sleep activity that normal flies have. This gene that seemed to be necessary for flies to keep time was named period. 
And it was the first milestone in the discovery of the clocks that eventually turn out to work in our bodies as well. When I was, <clears throat> when I uh, finished my doctorate, I was offered a postdoctoral position in uh, States, and I boarded the plane from Warsaw all the way to Seattle, and I was going to stay there for just one year. But on December 13 of 1991, communists imposed martial law to uh, delegalize solidarity, and I was very worried, and, and uh, there were tanks on the streets, and there was, um, the country was essentially sealed. So I was worried and angry, and I joined Polish community in Seattle to protest martial law on every 13th of every month. My husband was still in Poland at the time, and I was very worried about him, but finally he managed to join me, and we decided to stay in the States, as did many scientists who were caught by martial law in the US. I concentrated sterilized insects. I did several experiments that showed that, in fact, there is a clock in the reproductive system, and this clock controls several rhythms that are necessary for the sperm to acquire fertilizing ability. And in constant light, all these rhythms were disrupted. So my student curiosity was satisfied to, to a point, but I also wondered whether the period gene that I learned back in my student days was involved in my clock. And this question I asked after we traveled we traveled back to Oregon from Washington, D.C., across the country because I was offered faculty position at the Oregon State University. Living in Oregon was a dream come true. It's a beautiful state, but moreover, I was able to uh, open my own fly lab and start collaborating with Professor Jeff Hall, who was a period gene expert. In his lab, we discovered together that um, fly reproductive system also has its own clock and it's expressing the period gene and that we can take this system out of the body, culture it in vitro and see oscillations of clock genes. What this meant was that the brain is really not necessary for the clock to function, and it was quite a novel idea at the time. At one visit to Jeff Hall's lab, he, when he met me, he exclaimed, we cracked the clock code. What he meant was that he and collaborators mutated hundreds and hundreds of flies to find other genes that could work with period, because nobody believed that one gene can make up a clock. And bingo, they really figured out how it works. It's a negative feedback loop with two positive elements, clock and psych, which produce negative elements, our good friend period and Tim. When these negative elements uh, accumulate, they repress the positive elements and the loop is closed. At this point, you may ask, what do I care? What is the clock mechanism that tells the fly when to emerge or when to fly around. Well, I'm here to tell you that we are big flies, only less pretty and missing wings. For example, if you look, if you look inside the fly, you will find digestive system that has very similar sections working, functioning in a similar way as our own system, digestive system, as shown by the same colors. Also, our cells look, function, and divide in a very similar way as fly cells, only we have millions more of them to build our big bodies. What about circadian clock? Many years of research showed that our clocks work 
almost exactly like flight logs. There is a negative feedback loop and four core genes involved, which are homologous to flight genes. And just as we showed in, just as we showed in flies, humans also have central clock in the brain, but in addition, most of our organs have clocks in their cells that help to regulate metabolism and all kinds of processes. I was, of course, very interested in the reproductive system, and we managed to study it in the mice with my Polish colleagues, and we showed that prostate of mice, prostate gland, has a beautiful rhythm of period expression, especially the red dots signify on the third picture, signify the per expression in cell nuclei. And other people later on showed that if the clock is disrupted in prostate gland, this is then, this gland is prone to the cancer. So, we think now, we know now that clocks are very important for uh, us humans, for our health, for our good functioning. So, the three scientists, Jeff Hall, Michael Rosbush, and Mike Young, who discovered clock mechanism in flies, were awarded 2017 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. The whole field celebrated, and we were very happy for them. Why are clocks important, really? I give you two examples. First, as we go through our daily cycles of sleep and um, activity, fasting during sleep and eating during the day, our brains go through cycles of low and high alertness. This is because the hormones also oscillate. So at night, when we have low alertness, melatonin, the sleep hormone, is high, but cortisol, activity hormone, is low. And sleep is very important for our uh, brain capacity. New studies show that during sleep, uh, metabolic waste is removed from the brain. So if sleep is irregular, it's harder to learn and to remember things. A case in point is study from the Harvard University when they followed many hundreds of students for several weeks, look, uh, recording their sleep habits. The students showed on the left had very irregular habits. They slept long or not at all. The students on the right had very good sleep habits. And guess who had better grades, significantly better grades were were recorded in students who had regular sleep. My second example is about disease. When you give, when scientists gave um, irradiation, anti-cancer irradiation treatment to mice in the morning, this mice lost most of their hair. But when exactly the same dose was given in the evening, the hair loss was minimal. Why is that? Because cells of the, that make our hair follicles have their own clock, and this clock makes them all divide uh, in synchrony, making them more or less susceptible depending on the time of day. So, thank you for taking this journey through clock discovery with me. We discussed the Pyrion gene when it was disco uh, discovered in flies, then the sequence, then the clock was understood in flies, and then it turned out that our own clocks are very similar, and that clock, clocks support human health, and we can um, really, there is a lot more to learn, but we, we've had, we have pretty good understanding what's happening. So let me leave you with three uh, take-home messages. First, uh, embrace your curiosity and follow it. Even things that seem not understood, like my example of constant light fertilizing insects, can lead to great discoveries. 
follow your passion, follow your curiosity. Second, each of you have a clock, internal clock, that may be slightly different from the clock of a person sitting next to you. Try to understand it and learn what is the best time for you to perform certain activities, whether you're a night owl or a morning bird. And there is an app for that that you can download called My Circadian Clock. And finally, next summer when you see fruit flies coming attracted to your ripened fruit in your kitchen, thank them for helping to understand your biological clock. Thank you.